it's the next level. That should hold him off for a bit. Oh my god, you wore it! Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I look so good, I told you. Yeah, I told yeah, yeah. you. All right, listen to me. You yeah. need to get off this ice, okay? Only way off this ice is up those stairs. Great, and there's only about a thousand of them and two of us. Here. Take these. No way. Is it time? It's time. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about the last episode of Hawkeye Season 1, which is, so this is Christmas? And uh, with that, I'm going to ask Steve to uh, talk about this synopsis. Yeah, so this is Christmas. Um, is Clint and Kate's partnership is tested as they face the consequences of exposing the conspiracy. So initial thoughts. What were your thoughts? I mean, I thought it was a, I thought it was a great finale episode. Uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see where they take these characters. I can't wait to talk about it because there's so much. There was so much packed into this episode. Oh yeah, that it's just going to be thrilling to talk about it. And I haven't listened. I haven't listened to any other podcasts on it. I haven't watched any videos on it or anything. So I I don't want to get spoiled of anything for this uh, podcast. But uh, but after we get done, man, I'm gonna, certainly going to dial into some of those and see what's going on what people think and what the theories are. and Yeah, with my thought, I thought this was a great finale for the show and pretty much continuation because I don't know if we get a season two. Mm -hmm. Did they announce that? No, they haven't announced that. And I don't, you know, I don't know any of these shows have gotten, except for What If. I think What If is the only one that's gotten an official announcement of a season two. You know, we know that Captain America and the Winter Soldier, there's going to be another Captain America movie with yeah. Anthony Mackie, but we don't necessarily know if there's going to be another season of the TV show. We're assuming that, that WandaVision was a one-off, you know, and the same with, with Loki. I don't think we've had, there's any, been any kind of announcement. Loki seems to me like that would be the only one I could see really... Having another having, Yeah, season. having a second yeah. season. This one, they they really kind of wrapped up the story with the rumors we have of, of the other shows coming out. I think the things that we got left uh, hanging in this episode are, are going to be taken care of in other TV series. That's what I think. Yeah, I, I really think the same thing. And, uh, you know, honestly, it's like, I think they're leading us into a young Avengers at this point. I could I could definitely see that with the way the the way the episode ended for sure. Yeah, if we're gonna get Miss Marvel and that's another uh Marvel character that's out there and uh some somebody that we are looking forward to, as well as She Hulk, and there's gonna be so many other characters and I'm looking forward to that. Uh honestly, uh, you know, we got Armor Wars coming out, so there's a lot to be said within this. So the way it left off, honestly, left us off with a salivating, you know, mm -hmm. and especially me. I just love how I get my end result feeling and thought. Mm -hmm. The ending scene was amazing. The fight scenes were intense and gave us everything that we needed. And with that, we're going to have to go right into our top fives. So, I know you're chummy with my mom, but I gotta say, I didn't think you'd make the cut for the Christmas party. Kate Bishop, I'm not here to ruin anything. I'm just going to kill Barton, have some appetizers, and then we'll go. Well, I hope you enjoyed the bruschetta, because it looks like you already lost him. He's in the elevator. Well, yeah, at, what, out of 65 floors, you think you're just gonna magically guess which one he's on? 12th floor. Damn it. Enjoy the party. So you started last week, right? I don't remember, but go ahead. All right, uh, I'll start off with my top five. My number five would be the LARPers from the NYPD and the FDNY helping Doran Clint's and, and Kate's plan, helping people get out of the venue. Uh, that whole big scene that they created at that point. And they were in regular civilian costumes, but you know, you see, you got grills, you got everybody else out there, and they're like, we can't do anything. Nobody's paying attention to us. So they go and put on their garb from their LARPers outfit 
and act as if they're like Avengers or people helping out and people are listening and they're moving. Yeah. I thought that was amazing and awesome. I just yeah. loved it. Yeah, I love that part. Uh, this was one of my numbers as well, so I'm just going to jump to it and, and talk about what I just I love that they're all at the party. They're all on comms together. They're all acting like this yep. this team. You know, it was it was just it was really funny. I was glad they all survived. I know we had kind of discussed the possibility of of some of them maybe you know not surviving. Yeah, exactly. You know, I love seeing Grills and he's carrying Armand. What was it, Armand the seventh? You know, mm-hmm. on his shoulder, and we see the Do you the know one who I am. <laughs> we see that the one. <laughs> girl grabs the 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 baseball bat and she's and she's knocking out tracksuit mafia guys we see the big guy like chest bump or stomach bump uh one of the tracksuit guys as well and them talking to the police at the end you know we're just trying to make sure you arrest the right people you know and I, i've got some quotes i've got in my quotes uh one of their lines they said that i thought was really really cool i love seeing the larpers and uh and just like i said again everybody working together as a team was really really cool yeah, it was amazing. Uh, we had a great time watching them come into their own and helping out with Clint and Kate's needs at that point and being part of the group. You know, uh, that that's something that uh, I, I think Clint was against, but the fact that he kind of was helpful within that, within the story, to get them all involved at that point. Yeah, it, it, was, it was kind of a... Like I'll have to go back and watch it to see if it's subtle or if it was if it was quicker than that the turnaround he had because I want to say it's it's been a couple of episodes since he kind of was telling Kate to kind of get lost and and not you know not get involved and sending her home and and then like there's in the last episode when she came to his rescue i think that was kind of that bonding moment we saw some more of that mentoring and we saw some of that in this episode as well so i'm, I'm going to have to I, I really this is one that i really want to rewatch again and see that subtle turn of of clint from being the loner kind of guy to back with the team again yeah same here and i do agree that leads me to my number four. Yeah. Uh, that would be the conversation with Fisk and Eleanor about how she owed him. But she already had paid that at least tenfold by that time and created her own network. But in this case, she was able to ask him for a favor, which is very unusual for him. And we already know that, you know, this is the Fisk that we know from Daredevil. And Vincent D'Onofrio paying it forward doing everything that he had to do from the original Daredevil Netflix series, as well as Punisher that we had covered. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And then some too, uh, at the very end, we'll, we'll get into that later on, but for the fact that he is a businessman and the fact that he was in business with Eleanor and, and we kind of confirm at that point too, that the, you know, Eleanor's husband is dead. So at least we get that confirmation, but the fact that she is evil herself. Yeah, this is, I'll kind of play into this one as my next point as well, because I absolutely love seeing Vincent D'Onofrio in, in, as Kingpin. He was so great. We were worried that we were only going to get a little bit of him, but we got a whole lot. Uh, that fight between uh, him and Kate, we, that was tough to watch on the second watch, man, because just the way he's throwing her around and stuff. Um I loved that he had that Hawaiian shirt on. Like for most of the episode, the very beginning of the episode, he's got his classic white and black, but then he puts that uh, Hawaiian shirt on underneath it. And I'm not sure what was going on with that. If there, if there were supposed to be something with the Hawaiian shirt uh, that we were supposed to take note of, but uh, it was just, every time I saw him and it was, just, I, it was hilarious and we can get into it right now. Cause this was one of my points was there's no way he could be dead. Right. I mean, Kate shoots him with an arrow. She blows him up. Eleanor runs him down with a car. And do you really think that a bullet from Maya is going to kill the kingpin? Come on. I no, it's not. No, I can't no, believe no, they no, would. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I cannot believe they would bring him back just for these two episodes and then never use him again. It's it's got to. There's got to be uh, more to this story, and I I can't wait to see it and find out what happened between him and Maya. Well, that leads me into my points, and I'll, we'll we'll go into that later about Kingpin, the comic book version of Kingpin that we need to talk about because I think we're getting more elements of that within this particular show that will spread more along 
the MCU or Disney Plus series as we get more. That would lead me to my third. So that would be the Trick Arrow making with Clint and Kate within Grill's place at Mm -hmm. this point. (laughs) And I thought it was great to see so much that they can accomplish within such a short time. The fact that Clint does trust Kate to use these trick arrows at certain points within the fight, too, because we see more of Stark Tech, uh, Pym Tech, everything else. Mm-hmm. And I'm just loving it. It's like, yeah. we, we get all the toys. We I get all the toys. Yeah, I love <laughs> this. And, and this plays right into my next point as well, because I thought it was great that I love the scene, but not, it wasn't just the scene. It wasn't just the arrow making. It was the conversation going on between Clint and Kate during that whole time of making those arrows where he's just, he's just mentoring her and he's telling her things like heroes have to make tough decisions. It's, it's going to be lonely. It's and all this and, and her just looking at him. And then I just, I was, I, I got chills when, when she was telling that story about seeing him uh, during the Avengers movie, when he was fighting the aliens and she says, you were there with just a stick uh, and rope, you know, and arrows and you had no superpowers and you yeah. showed me, I'm going to, I'm going to check in my voice just just remembering it because for the fact that yeah. she saw that as a child and saw somebody that she saw heroic just being who they were yeah human yeah exactly exactly she could she could see that oh you don't have to have superpowers you don't have to be this you can be just a regular person and become a yeah. superhero inspiration and I just, yeah, yeah i was i was just amazed i just loved it so much um that whole conversation they had. And, and like her, the label, the label maker with the, the arrows was just great. <laughs> it's like, like that one's way, way too dangerous. 1980s you know? too. Uh, if you look at you it know. too, wasn't it that like old perfed thing where it's like plastic perf? Yeah, it was an old, yeah, it was one of the old ones. It wasn't one of the modern ones with the keyboard. And uh, uh, yeah, I've got one of those in my office with, that's got a keyboard on it that you can actually type on and then make labels. But yeah, she had the it's old wild. style. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that leads us to your number three. Uh, that was uh, that played right into my number three. That that was it. So go on to your number two. Uh, my number two, though, that would be the fight at the end. So how Clint is stuck within the Rockefeller tree. So I just love that the fact that there he is. He was within the party, but he jumps out the window and then falls into the Rockefeller tree, mm-hmm. and then. He's in consistent contact with Kate, and she's like, I got this, I got this. And he goes like, I'm stuck in a tree, and he makes kind of nice with an owl. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, the fact that they used that really made me happy. And, and to me, honestly, the Rockefeller Center tree, if you see it, it's a staple within the holidays within New York City. So it's just amazing to me. And she gets him out with the acid arrow and then a huge fight with all the people Fisk sends in, just like the jumpsuit mafia and everybody else and and the fights there within. Honestly, there's so much going on. But the fact that the way Kate and Clint work together with the trick arrows Oh my God, this is what we needed. It was like, oh my God, this is amazing. They were working together. They're working side by side. They know what the hell to do. And it's like, you know that Kate is the next legacy and Clint's going to be there to guide her. And so much. They've got the matching costumes, and yeah, yeah it was really, <laughs> well, really great. Especially when she brings it out. She goes, oh, you wore it. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I love that at the end, the whole conversation about the, the elasticity of it and how he can move in it. Because like you commented last week about the Ronin, uh, or two weeks ago, whenever it was, that you commented about the Ronin uh, armor yeah, you know, being so heavy and leather and stuff had to be tough. Um my my number two is uh, Kate and Yelena in the elevator, uh, and that just their whole thing. I love that when when uh, Kate spins her around and her coat comes off, and uh, and Yelena's like, "Did you plan that?" And she's like, "Yes." No, <laughs> like, like I just, it was just great. And her hitting all the buttons, being annoying, and as you know, Yelena is blocking her from hitting the buttons. And then she's able to to do it, and just that whole fight scene where they're running through the building. Um, they run. <laughs> this is what I noticed it the first time, but I really keyed into it the second time. There's mm. a guy sitting at his desk 
on Christmas Eve doing something. I don't know what oh, kind yeah, of work yeah, he was yeah. doing. He's just sitting there. It's Christmas he's Eve. He's watching a fight unfold in front of yeah. him. Yeah. And there's this party going on. And he's, he's just sitting at his desk doing his job, you know, and they come running past him. So, yeah, yeah it was it was really great. I loved when, when Yelena escaped from her and she goes down the building and then Kate kind of tries to do the same thing. And she almost doesn't make it. But and she. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, wow. And she makes it. She does the thing. You know, and it, it's it, it's you mentioned about um, the inspiration she had. And that's something that she saw Clint do. You know, yeah. she saw him jump down a building and and survive. And so she's it like, was okay. all about I don't care with Clint at that point. He yeah. just was just trying to do what he needed to do at that time during that time of war. But he didn't want that of Kate. He still doesn't want that of Kate. If you think about it, he thinks of he thinks of Kate as his like like his daughter. At this point, at the end of the episode, I think Clint thinks of Kate as a mirror image of himself, or at least a clone of himself. That we'll that see could when do what we he get, could do. Yeah, when we get back to when we get into notes, we may talk a little bit more about about okay. that. So, um, I know we, we've been going kind of quick, but I I think we're at your number one. Yeah, I know. Uh, my number one that would be the ending scene with Fisk and Echo. So that was pretty much out of the comics, so comic spoilers, but Fisk does get shot to the, uh, a shot to the face from Echo within the comics, just like within this particular scene, but we don't see it. We do hear the shot. It happens within the episode. Within the comics, he does suffer some sort of like physical blindness, as we had seen within the episode. He could easily take an arrow to the chest and take it out and there'd be no problem. But with this, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking just like it within the comics, he gets shot in the face. He is blinded. So uh, I don't think he is dead. So, yeah, no, I don't think he's dead at all. That's I, I said that at the very beginning. I'm fairly certain he's not dead. I can't I can't believe they would bring such a huge actor like that back in that role and have him just be this. Yeah, I can't believe it. I, oh, so. well, especially since we we have to talk about, about No Way Home and we have uh, Charlie Cox coming back as mm -hmm. Daredevil from Netflix series too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my number one is the fight between Clint and, and Yelena um, okay. where, you know, she basically saves him from Kazi because Kazi was about to shoot him. Um, but it was the whole – the whole fight is just heartbreaking because she's just – she's won answers about how – how her sister died and, and why her sister died. And she's not believing it, but man, Jeremy Renner and Florence Pugh. Wow. Uh, yeah. They just, that scene, like I know. It was so heart wrenching to mm -hmm. me. It, yeah. I, I had tears in my eyes because you could see the emotion between both, not just the character, but the actors themselves. Yeah. And to me, it's like, it was him, Hawkeye or Clint trying to tell Yelena, it should have been me. And I had to battle her for it. And it was basically about you because you were her family and Yelena couldn't really come to that point and understand it. And by the end of it, she understood. And it was like so hard. Yeah. Yeah. They, wow. they played it so well. And we, we get to see more of, again, and I think I talked about this last week when just the fact that Clint knew who Yelena was is that we, we find out that his and Natasha's relationship was so much closer than we even got to see in the movies. I mean, we saw it when, you know, in, um, the, in Endgame. You know, you could yeah. see how close they were. And so it was just, it was just really amazing. I love him doing the whistle and that callback yeah. to Black Widow and that callback mm -hmm. to the, the last, uh, last episode was just, just wonderful. And like it's I said, so those two actors. Breaking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, un it's unfortunate that I, I don't know if, if like the Emmy awards are going to even consider these kind of shows. For, for Emmys, but man, these actors are so good. I wish they could get some sort of recognition. They should, and I do feel the same way, and honestly, uh, I actually tweeted out to Jeremy Renner and said to him, thank you for everything you did. I loved Hawkeye, and we love everything that you do within the MCU. A lot of people don't like Hawkeye. Honestly, I do enjoy Hawkeye as a character because he was pretty much the normal guy out of the whole 
series, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the tech. He didn't have the superpowers. Him and Widow were the only people that were just normal people. And we don't have Black Widow anymore. But with him and, you know, Renner and Florence Pugh as those characters, it made so much for a great story. So we got some notes here? Yeah, I do. Uh, me too. We can just go back and forth if you want. Sure. Um, I'll go first. Uh, Clint, I love that he called Kate his partner. There, again, we're talking about that whole conversation they had where, where it's at the very beginning of the episode where she's trying to tell him that she's going to take care of it on her own. And he says, no, I'm your – we're partners. We're going to do this together. I just – I thought that was great. Oh, cool. First one for me would be uh, at the end we see Clint and Kate come to the Buckner residence or the farm and and he brings her into his family. Something that I have been wanting a lot since the beginning of this show for the fact that he embraces her as family. And I think that Kate needed that. Um, you know, I don't know if that, if that recording of Eleanor admitting to taking care, I mean, cause all she said was taking care of Armand. I don't know if that's going to be admissible in court. You know, we'll see. It is a comic book. It is a comic book show. So they can use comic book logic uh, for it, but maybe. All right, next up for me would be uh, Kate introduces Pizza Dog at the Barton household, saying, it's Lucky. We yep. don't get Pizza Dog. We get Lucky. We actually get the name of the character of the dog within the Hawkeye series in the comic book in this series. I thought that was amazing. I loved the, the, the tracksuit mafia guy uh, stopping the fight just long enough to thank Kate for helping him with his girlfriend. You know, he's like, I have to thank you for helping me with my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, last up for me would be the watch is really Clint's wife's at that point. According to the comics, she is a character called Mockingbird. And she was a part of S.H.I.E.L.D. at a certain point. Now, mind you, do I know everything about this character? No. But I highly suggest YouTube channel Comics Explained with Rob and do that because he's going to go into a whole tirade. <laughs> yeah, I had this in my notes. So that that symbol on the back, I thought that was just the shield symbol. Was that the Mockingbird symbol or is uh, that just it's the a, shield? It's a shield symbol. But the fact is, is that Mockingbird was her call sign. Right, right. This is what confused me, and I'll, I'll, because uh, I know you might not be able to answer this question. But if mm -hmm. that's just this, that's just the shield emblem, and all it had was a number nineteen mm -hmm. at the bottom there, because I freeze framed it and, and like took a screenshot of it and, and zoomed in. Okay, yeah. it had the number nineteen. How is that? How is just that information going to reveal who she is? How does that reveal that she's Mockingbird? I don't understand why. Because if that's just the shield emblem and the number nineteen, what does that have to do with? Mockingbird, how would people be able to identify specifically her? The comic gurus that are out there will know for the fact that uh, that it's Agent 19. Okay. And, and a lot of people will know. That also, plus the fact that we haven't really seen too many agents exposed. And Mockingbird was affiliated with Hawkeye within the comics. So we're we're getting everything for the fact that she is part of his family. She is his family. So. Yeah, I just didn't, like, it didn't, it doesn't, it's, I'm going to have to, like you said, I'm going to have to watch some of these videos and, see, and it, get these guys to, to explain because I don't understand how just that little bit of information would have been right. enough for somebody to, to yeah. know, oh, no, Agent 19, that's Mockingbird, that's Laura Barton, that's Clint's wife. I can't, like, I don't see how the connection. Like we said before, comics explained mm -hmm. on YouTube. Yeah. Check out Rob on Rob <laughs> on yeah. Comics Explained. So check okay. that out. Uh, I've got a couple more here. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I love the the trick arrow that they use that trunk the the van. And uh, Kate is like, "Well, what do we do about that?" And and Clint's like, "Well, I guess I'm gonna have to talk to Scott." And then the owl picks it up, and and Clint just goes, "Well, there's that," and <laughs> that's it. I'm like. These guys just got taken away by an owl in their little tiny van. So, um, <laughs> uh, let's see anything else that I, uh, the fight between Kazi and Maya was short, but deadly. Um, and then uh, just the last thing is that post credits or mid credit scene with that full version of, of the song, uh, save the city or whatever the title of the song was, was pretty cool. 
I didn't hmm. watch it the second time, but I watched it, I watched it through the whole thing on the, the first time. So, all right, cool. Uh, we should move on to quotes. Sure. Do you want to start? I don't have any quotes. Okay, I I only have three. Um, and the first one was the first time I watched it. This just made me laugh every time. Was when uh, Jack is talking to little Armand, and he says, "Do you remember when you peed your pants in the Hamptons? I do. Everybody does." Um, and then, and then uh, we already referenced the discussion about the arrows where Clint says, you're right, we need a ton of gear, like a whole batch of way too dangerous trick arrows, I thought was really good. And then LARPers uh, telling the police, we're essentially Avengers, <laughs> was pretty good. Uh, so we had a piece of feedback that we actually got um, yep. a little bit before the, the finale, but uh, it's, it's kind of long. Do you, have, do you have it in front of you as well? Yeah, I do. Okay, do you want uh, – I'll start. I'll read like the first paragraph and you just want to go back and forth kind of? Sure. Okay. Uh, this is from our good friend, Lara. Thank you very much, Lara. Uh, Stephen Mark, hey, guys. I've been behind, but I'm finally caught up on Hawkeye and just thought I would say that this is the best Disney Plus series I've seen so far. Episodes one and two were good, but episode three really started picking up steam in both the action and the emotion. And episode four was just fantastic with Hawkeye and Widow's backstory and the badass fight scene at the end revealing the appearance of Yelena Belova. This series is what I've loved all my favorite MCU movies, a combination of action, humor, and heart. And what I love most the series is, is that like Black Widow, we finally get a peek into the life of non-quote-unquote superhero. Neither Clint nor Natasha have cosmic superpowers or billions of dollars in tech. Their gifts lie in good old-fashioned skill, training, espionage, Imagine that you're of uh, a couple of hot shots at S.H.I.E.L.D. revealed as the best, and along comes 80-year-old, unaging super soldier, billionaire playboy with a rocket suit, <laughs> and a jolly green giant, uh, and a friggin' Norse god, and they ask, join your team. This often in past relegated... Hawkeye to boring status in the hierarchy of Avengers coolness, but in episode 3, you see why Clint is truly an Avenger. Despite this, uh, well, despite his disability after losing his hearing aid, he is still able to use his quick thinking and skills and him and Kate out of a sticky situation. Wow. Plus, I'm happy to see Clint the family man again. This has been the thing that's made him stand out from the other Avengers since Age of Ultron. The fact that he's always had his se this secret family that he's trying to keep safe and allowed to live a normal life. And we get a little more of the real hero of the Barton family, his wife, Laura. Aw, who I've always liked for the way she holds the family together and always has some kind words of wisdom for her husband. But now we see that she may actually know a bit more about life as a spy than we originally thought. I love how her and Clint are true partners, relaying encoded messages to each other as she does research for him at the homestead. I've always liked Jeremy Renner as an actor, but Hawkeye just didn't stand out to me as, an, as a character in the past. Until he lost everything in Endgame, his family, his honor, and then later his best friend and partner Natasha, now he is one of the most intriguing Avengers in my opinion. And I'm excited to see if, like, George Bailey uh, in, quote-unquote, It's a Wonderful Life, which he and Kate were watching, he makes it back to his family just in time for Christmas. We'll be watching. And, Cheers, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they do. They do. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I, I love that. Thank you so much for the feedback, Laura. Um, and she also tacked on a, a little recommendation uh, to do a, a podcast over James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, which I, I think we talked about, but it's yeah. been so long now. Uh, we may have to revisit it. And uh, We do have to revisit that. And Laura, you are more a part of the uh, Panels of Pixels family, so you're more than welcome. So I, I think you're going to be coming on for The Witcher. Season at okay. this point. Very Season cool. two at this point, right? 
Yes, it is season two of The Witcher. I haven't started it yet. I've been so I busy. I started the the first episode and a half, so uh, I'm a little bit ahead of you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I uh, can't wait to watch it. I just It's just been such a busy with Christmas. Oh, it's been and- busy with Christmas, work, everything. Everything mm-hmm. is going on. I'm moving still. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we still try to give you guys some sort of entertainment. Yes. Because I like to do that, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, Steve will continue on doing, what, Snowpiercer? We'll do The Witcher. And then uh, what else is available? Wow, there's going to be so much. I believe Ben and I are going to be covering Spider-Man No Way Home. Nice. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch it for a second time yet. So I look forward to hearing what you and Ben uh it was so good. I can't wait to watch it again, but I just, just again, time. Just have yeah. not had the time. Yeah, so we're going to be covering that. And then on top of that, anything that help else that happens within the comics universe that we could actually talk about. So uh, uh, the King's Man, we need to talk about that too. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's going to be a lot to be talked about. Yeah. So uh, keep in mind, panels, pixels, we're going to be multiple podcasts at this point. The only thing I saw in the news, and I didn't put it in the in the doc, is I, I've seen a couple of times uh, it re-shared or re, uh, restated on different social media platforms that Kevin Feige has confirmed that Charlie Cox will be playing Daredevil in other uh, Marvel properties. So we yep. look. I look forward to seeing that again to see uh, seeing Charlie Cox. Uh, out and about in in the red suit again. That will be very very cool and very fun. It was uh, uh, again spoiler if you haven't watched Spider Man No Way Home yet. We've already talked about it on this podcast. A is little that, bit uh, is that uh, he does show up as Matthew Murdoch. We don't see him as Daredevil, but he definitely shows up as Matthew Murdoch for a very short uh, cameo. Yeah, but you know he's just a really good lawyer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, podcast recommendations. Um, like I said, this with, with Christmas and everything else, I just haven't had the chance to, <laughs> to even even uh, find anything to recommend at this point. Just the standard Podcastica shows. Uh, House Podcastica is going to start doing double duty here pretty quick where they're going to have uh, – actually, maybe triple duty. Uh, well, Wheel of Time has just wrapped up, so they but they still got Yellow Jackets and they got – uh, Cobra Kai that's coming out. They're going to have Book of Boba Fett as well. So I guess they're going to be doing triple duty uh, for a little while. I'm not sure uh, House, but uh, just check out House Podcastica on any of your podcast player of choice and you can uh, find those episodes for those shows if you're following any of those shows. Yellow Jackets, Book of Boba Fett, or Cobra Kai. Uh, same here for me. And for YouTube recommendations, I would say The Grim Life Collective as they continue on, um, Jessica has had a little bit of a health issue, but uh, they continue on. And if you go onto their Patreon page, they are going to be doing far more stuff within California for uh, location shoots and everything else. So check them out. Grim Life Collective. All right. Um, as always, as we always state and remind you, you can, you're hearing us on whatever podcast player of choice. You can find us on Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts. I'm assuming we're on Amazon podcasts. You can find us on any of those ones. Uh, if there's an opportunity to give us a review, we would love uh, to see that and get notification of that review. And we'll read it here on the podcast. Uh, you can check out our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter. Set it right this time. Uh, with the handle at panels to the number two pixels. So that's at panels yep. to pixels on Twitter. We uh, You can send us an email, good old fashioned email at panels two pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two pixels one, the T-O spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at the end at gmail.com. Come. We're also on YouTube as Panels to Pixels Podcast, and we are on Instagram uh, at Panels to Pixels Podcast there as well. And we'd like everybody else to check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level online network and uh, just check that out. Coming up, as Mark already stated, you will hear you will hear he and Ben probably doing a spoiler full review of Spider Man No Way Home and. Uh, um, I'll find out later when that's going to be recording. I may send a voicemail in for that one. All right, cool. 
So where else can you listeners hear us? In other places? Well, I can be heard on the Adrenaline Cinema podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And we cover action films, adventure films, thriller films, and suspense films. So there you can check us out. And uh, I believe within the next year, you'll be able to hear us covering The Fifth Element, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. You can obviously you can hear me right here on panels, two pixels uh, uh, podcast, and I can also be heard sending voicemails to various other podcasts that our friends do and uh, others. All right. Well, well, that's our show, and I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark, and I'm Steve, and we'll see you on the next panel. Thank you.